Hey, Guy from New Plastic, and it's not a dream. We're doing Redshift again, this time a procedural Cheetos material. Before we start, I made a new pack of procedural snacks, over 21 different famous snacks we all know and love, potato chips, Doritos, pretzels, Cheetos, and more, different flavors, all 100% procedural, including simple snack models for both Octane and Redshift. If you feel like you need them, feel free to buy them from my Gumroad, a great way to help yourself and to support the channel. Another way to support the channel is by buying prints or pins that I made. The prints are of images I made in videos on the channel, like the realistic Obey logo, the 80 year old Mario, or the Squidward gross close up. Very affordable matte prints that look and feel great. That's on my other Gumroad. I'll leave all the links in the description below. And of course, consider supporting on Patreon, where, first of all, from now on, all my patrons and members will get completely ad free versions of these videos. Beyond that, as a patron or member, you can get these project files, free products, and other cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. And lastly, I opened up a new plastic Discord where we can all get together there, share ideas, share our work, share our inspirations, and just kick it. I'm not that good at a constant kind of online interaction, but sometimes I just want to share something casually, and I feel like there's no avenue of casually talking about things between us. So if you want to kick it, come to the Discord. I'll leave the invite in the description. Follow me on Instagram at ojang or the channel at brand new plastic, and subscribe to the channel. You know, just click that subscribe button. Let's go. So I'll very quickly model a Cheetos model. I don't want to linger on this part too much, but I still want you to see this. I'll just draw a very simple spline shape, center the axis, and I'll add a cube so I know what scale I'm working with. Let's make the cube around five centimeter tall, and now I can scale the spline to fit that height. And I know this model fits a real world scale. I'll change interpolation mode to uniform so that when I add a displacement deformer, it'll deform it in a uniform way. Just adjust scale and strength to something like this. Cool, let's add the spline to a volume builder, lower the resolution to like 0.01, because this is a pretty small scale model, and change the spline radius to around 0.2, and up the density to like 20 or so. Let's add a random field, change space to objects below, change radius to 0.09 scale down the noise scale and play with the remapping you can play around here it's not gonna make a huge difference just don't go too extreme with the sliders so you don't lose the noise completely let's up the surface threshold by a tiny tiny bit i'm going up 0.01 at a time because this is super sensitive okay something like 0.59 let's add a smooth layer mm, bring down the contrast on the noise and up the smoothing Let's actually up the spline radius and now we can control the radius scale along the spline with this curve here. I'll just lower the resolution for a second and we can kind of shape the spline making it thinner at the bottom and add some variance along it, you know, like a Cheetos. Let's up the resolution and maybe we can do 0.02. So the surface distortion isn't as sharp. Yeah, this looks right. Let's put it in a volume measure, duplicate this displacement deformer and put it above the volume builder layer so it displaces the mesh and play around with the scale and strength to add just another subtle layer of distortion. I choked a low and high clip on the noise to get these like clipped surfaces, which I like. And now the cool thing is that I can select both of these displacement deformers and change the seed on the noise to instantly get variations on the look. Lastly, I'll add this whole thing to a null and add a smooth deformer just to soften everything. And I'll just remesh the whole thing and lower the mesh density to around 5% so I can have a nice looking and much lower poly mesh, which I can then start texturing and getting additional detail using the displacement in the material. Okay, let's just quickly light this up. I'll add a dome object, add an HDRI and rotate it for the subtle rim light effect. Let's add a key light. Turn down the intensity, add a redshift camera, change focal length to 80, and let's override the background in the camera to have a solid background color. Cool, let's add a standard material. And uh, let's just start by adding five maxa noises. Let's add a color layer node. And let's add the first noise to the base layer through a ramp node. Let's solo the color layer node and turn off layer one so we can see the base layer. 
Let's change the noise type to FBM, up the octaves to 7, lacunarity to 1.5, and gain to 0.25 to make the black stronger. Scale it down to 0.01, low clip to around 0.2, and high clip to around 0.9. Okay, now let's make the black in the ramp node like 95% gray, so we're really barely getting any contrast. Okay, let's duplicate the ramp node and plug the second noise to layer 1 in the color layer through that second ramp node. And let's change the noise type to FBM, octaves to 10, lacunarity to just over 2, gain to 0.25, leave scale at 1, and bring in the low and high clip just by a bit. Let's turn on layer 1, change blend mode to average, and actually let's make the left notch of the second ramp way darker, like 35% gray. So we're starting to get this very subtle blend between the two noises. Okay, let's move all these down and add a value node, which is set to 0, so it's just a black color. Let's plug it to layer 2, and plug the third noise to layer 2 mask. Let's change the noise type to displace turbulence, scale it down to 0.06. Wait, let's solo it. Crank low clip to like 0.6 and bring high clip to around 0.25 so the noise is reversed because we're using it as a mask. And let's plug this first noise through a ramp node to color 2 of this noise. So we basically replace the white parts of this noise with that other noise. And let's make the ramp like almost full white so we're just adding this very subtle white variety to the white parts of this mask noise. Cool, let's turn on layer 2 and change blend mode to burn. Plug the fourth noise to layer 3. Let's solo it. Change type to displaced, uh, displaced Voronoi. Octaves to 3.6, lacunarity to 2.7, gain to 0.44, exponent to 1.5, scale down to 0.02 and flip low and high clip with the high clip to around 0.15. And let's plug this last noise to layer 3 mask through a ramp node. Set type to FBM. Octaves like 12, lacunarity like 2.1, gain to 1, scale to 0.01, and flip low and high clip. And let's turn on layer 3 and change blend mode to darken. Cool, looks good. Let's scale down this third noise on the y-axis just a tiny bit so it's kind of stretched horizontally just a bit. All right, make some space here and let's add a displacement node and plug this whole thing to it using a scalar ramp. And for the displacement to work, we need to have a redshift tag on the model and turn on tessellation and displacement. And let's bring minimum edge to one and maximum subdivision to eight just to get more displacement detail. And let's turn the displacement scale to 0.2. And if we look at it, it looks like a turd right now. Let's make minimum range negative 0.5 and max range 0.5. So the mid-level is middle gray. And now we can kind of shape the contour with this curve, which I really like. Something like this, and maybe scale to 0.15. Cool. Let's add a color mix node, a max and noise, and plug it to both mix layers using different ramp nodes. And let's add another color layer node. Plug the displacement scalar ramp to its base layer. And let's duplicate this noise and uh, change type to Luca and scale it down. The details don't matter that much, just make it some kind of a fine noise. And plug it to layer 1 through a ramp node. Choke in the blacks halfway through and bring the whites in a bit. And if we change the layer 1 blend mode to difference, we're kind of getting this nice complex mix between the fine noise and the displacement noise pattern. And we can actually plug this noise to layer one mask to break up the fine noise even more, so it's even more complex now. Nice. Let's plug this color layer to the color mix amount using a scalar ramp. And let's solo this top noise here, change type to FBM, maybe a different seed. Octaves all the way up, lacunarity around 2.7, keep gain at 0.5, scale it way down to like 0.001, and maybe bring brightness up and contrast down a tiny bit just to reduce the contrast. And this will be the color system where we'll mix between the yellow parts and the orange parts. So let's make this top ramp this dark to light creamy color. And you can pause to see the color values if you want. And the second ramp will make this bright orange to a slightly darker orange. 
Cool, so now the whites from the mix amount show the second ramp. The blacks from the mix amount show the first ramp. And because the main noise pattern used in the mix amount is also used in the displacement, we know that most of what's showing here as orange will also be extruded out and most of what's showing as yellow will be kind of the crevices. But we mixed it up with more fine noise here, so we're kind of scattering some of the orange around randomly, but also breaking it up randomly. And let's plug the color mix to a color correction node and maybe lower the gamma a tiny bit so it's a bit brighter push the hue up slightly so it's a bit more yellow and up the saturation to like 1.5 so it's much more saturated and now we can use this scalar node to control the spread of the orange color so if i pull this white notch in i'm really flooding it with orange nice let's make some space here and plug the color correct to the base color and let's see how we're looking and now it's an orange turd nasty let's relax the displacement contrast a bit and maybe pull the white notch back on the color mix amount so we get a bit more yellow. Don't worry, it's gonna look great, it just needs a few more moves. Uh, let's plug the color correct to the subsurface color channel. Now let's bring the reflection all the way down, but up the IOR to like 3. You can experiment with this, this will have an effect on the transmission look. I found higher IOR looking better, but maybe you'll find otherwise. Let's bring SSS weight all the way up, and we're way too white, so let's change radius color to this very strong orange. Make scale very small, like 0.02. And I added AOVs of the refraction and SSS because then I can isolate them and have a better idea of how they look like. It's way too thick, so let's up the anisotropy way up to like 0.9. This kind of emphasizes the light rays that are coming towards the camera from within the object. So basically the SSS effect feels stronger. And I found that having lower scale values with higher anisotropy values just gets a more vibrant and saturated SSS look. But again, you might find otherwise, so feel free to play around with it and let's plug the color correct to the transmission scatter color channel make transmission depth 0.2 and turn transmission weight to like 0.15 very subtle and let's duplicate this color correct plug the color mix to it and plug it into the transmission color channel and i'll bring the saturation and hue shift down so you can see these colors are much duller and lighter compared to the first color correct node okay we're getting somewhere Let's, uh, let's expose more of the yellow on the color mix amount. Let's up the anisotropy of the transmission channel as well. And also let's up the diffuse roughness just to make it a bit flatter. And now we'll mix in some of the diffuse colors. So let's add a curvature node, plug it to the subsurface weight channel, change mode to concave, radius down to 0.1, double the samples to make it more pronounced and check same object only and in the remap tab uh, let's actually plug this noise here into the output range min so we're just breaking the curvature effect a bit and if we isolate the sss pass you can see that the curvature node paints the edges of the model black so basically just on the very edges we're removing the sss effect and adding variety to the density feel of the object and this is too strong actually so let's add a ramp node here choke the blacks in but make them like 25 percent gray and redshift crashed honestly i'm shocked redshift has been extremely stable compared to octane for me anyway we're back make the white notch around 90 percent gray so the edges have 25 percent sss and the rest has 90 percent sss okay i'm fast forwarding me redoing some steps uh, that weren't saved before the crash and cool we're back to where we were let's plug the displacement scalar ramp to another ramp reverse the notches and plug it into the coat weight. So now we're adding a coat reflection layer to the crevices and removing the coat reflection from the extruded areas. And I'm using the coat layer for reflection because it allows me for more control over IOR and bump without affecting the look of the transmission and SSS as much. Okay, we're starting to look good. Let's add a bit of roughness to the coat layer, up the IOR to like 1.8 just to make it more pronounced. Mm, let's up the samples on the transmission just to be safe even though we're really barely getting any transmission. Okay, maybe we can bring the displacement scale back to 0.2. And we can play around with some of these displacement noises, but I think we're looking pretty good. One thing I wanna do is in the render view settings, enable color control and up the contrast a bit. So we're basically increasing the saturation of the overall render. You can do it in post as well. Nice, yes, this looks awesome. Let's add a backlight just so we can see how the SSS feels. It's really important to test out different light setups when you're creating a material. 
Yeah, everything looks pretty good. Maybe just to add a bit more detail to the reflections, I'll add an add node, plug the coat weight ramp to layer two, and I'll plug this fine noise we had here to layer one, and plug the add node to the coat weight. And also I'll use the same fine noise and plug it to the bump channel using a bump node. Scale it to like 0.01, and change min and max to negative and positive 0.5. Yeah, this added some nice overall roughness. And coming to an end here, we can, uh, hmm, I'll add another ramp node to layer one of the coat add node, and I'll choke the blacks way in, so we're really just getting these tiny but strong flakes of reflection scattered around. Okay, I think we're good. Let's test out different seeds for these displacement noises. Maybe pull this white notch of this fine noise here. Expose more of the yellow color. And maybe up the max subdivisions to 10 in the redshift tag. Okay, man, this looks sick. Let's turn it into a flaming hot Cheetos. So first thing is to obviously change the orange gradient to red, but we'll make it a bit more dull because we're increasing the saturation down the line and red tends to get extremely saturated. Let's add a pink notch to the yellow gradient. We can reduce the hue shift on the color correction node to make it less yellow. And we crashed again. Dude, I've been pushing redshift with way, way more complex materials in the last couple of weeks and never, ever crashed. I think it has to do with the OBS recording or something. Anyway, we're back. Let's change the SSS radius color to something more red or even a tiny bit magenta. And let's expose more of the red parts since Flaming Hot Cheetos seems to have way more of that red powder covering it. And I think we're pretty good. Let's change this fine bump noise to, uh, hmm, FBM seems fine. And scale it down even more. And, uh, the colors look good. Maybe reduce the saturation. This red is way too candy-like. Maybe increase the displacement scale a bit. It's a bit too shiny. Let's choke this first ramp on the coating nodes and make the second ramp slightly darker so we're reducing the overall shininess and choke the fine noise even more. Maybe up the roughness. Maybe make the SSS radius a bit more dull and up the scale. Nah, bring the scale back to 0.02. But on the SSS weight ramp, pull the darker notch back a bit and make the brighter notch just slightly darker to tone down the SSS just a tiny bit more. Yeah, I think we're Gucci. That's it. We did it, folks. We broke Redshift, chopped it to pieces and made Cheetos dust from it. How about that? If you want more of these procedural snack materials, go to the Gumroad store and get the snack pack or buy prints and pins from the other Gumroad store. If you want access to this project file, consider supporting on Patreon and a flaming hot red kiss to my crunchy patrons and members. Yusuf Ismail, Yiningong, Guillaume Lopez, Dave Toro, Marie Robbins, Svoyas Chari, Eric Hu, Daniel Larry, Minky Kim, Hader, Leo, Peter Rodiger, Shinyan G, Chris Hyde, Alda Boyd, Ferong Ferong, Katie Royal, Derek Fredrickson, Vico Sun, Ruby Nine, Lucas Ranche, Tell Me More, Jessica Rutt Pendrath, Bori, Jin Kwan Wu, Domestic God in the House, Toby T, Adam Traxler, Everyday Swiss, General Zods, Kevin Bolyu, Simon Sturm, Mr. Hoptaz, Sebastian Reuter, Henriette Marie Jean Glickstein, Naftali Mann, Dennis Gamayev, Luigi Crispino, Jeffrey Carrier, Mohammed Ahmed, JJRAMV, Elian B, Ohao Ming, Jong Irhan, Jeff Bukema, 3D Monkey Biz, Aryaman Munish, Arlen, Suki Violet Sue, The 22 Design, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desolé, Derek Schultz, Maurice Hickendorf, The Studio Image, Matus Jedrzejewski, Blue Hamel, R. Cragen, Joshua Akoy, Pongso Cornim Siri, Webb, Kong Idiot, Maddie de Gueldre, Cho Yun Jun, NZE, IEMN, Golfino 666, Ali Esser, Leandro Merriman, May, 
Falgasm, Shane, Perry Cooper, Hannah Kazeka, Oisin O'Brien, Joel Taylor, Toma Jor, Kevin Nicantero, Jeremy Bajana, Christina, Yatsu, Raquel Vela, Ezekiel Grand, Alex Jin Young Cho, Mates Arakozi, Onur Kuroglu, Takeyuki Chiba, Pablo Ritter, Sophia Wilton, David Hughes, Riverstar 2190, LSD Honey, Monsef Canada, Alice Eternus, Hugo Escande, Ozan Shahin, Kuda.es, The Rusted Pixel, Alexandra Olduk, Adarsh Negi, Ali, Sunba, Alessandra Lori, Nick, Jingyin Lo, and everybody else on the list. Thank you so much. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.